Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Did you know your mind had loins? I want a pretender loin. I like that. Hopefully. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. Be sober. You know what the opposite of sober is? Drunk. That means don't be drunk, be sober. That's right. Be a sound mind. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't don't put things in that's gonna make you your mind unsound. That's right. Stay sober. Say I can be sober. I can be sober. Hallelujah. Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The truth is, when you get more revelation of Jesus Christ, more grace is imparted to you. That's right. Even in this law. Amen. As obedient children, say obedient children. Obedient, obedient children. children. We're honoring Father, right? Amen. Thank you, Lord. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. That is, when I was ignorant without Christ, I walked after the lusts of the flesh, and I don't need to be doing that anymore because now I'm a child of God and now I can walk in God's way. Yes. Praise you, Father. As obedient children, no longer fastening yourselves according to the former. I'm glad it says former, aren't you? Yeah. Fine. Aren't you say I'm not like that anymore? I'm not like right. that anymore. Hallelujah. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm delivered. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm set free. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse 15. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Who has a newer translation than King James? Anybody have a newer translation than the King James? Read that out of King James, verse 15. I mean, out of your translation. Okay. Okay, so the word conversation here means the way you live, the things you do, your conduct and manner of living. We read that 400 years ago, that word conversation meant that. But see, when this King James translation was done, the word conversation now means talking to somebody. But back then it meant the way you live. Yes. The manner of life that you live. So it says we're to be holy as God is holy. We're to be holy in all the ways that we live in every area of our life, in all of our conduct. You say, well, I can't do that on my own. Well, aren't you glad you're not on your own? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Aren't you glad you're not on your own anymore? Yeah. When I was on my own, man, I was in trouble. Yeah. But I've been delivered by Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And now he's in me. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Spirit of God dwells in us. Yes. Almighty God. So it's not our power or our might, but it's by the Spirit of God. All right. Thank you. We read that, right? Didn't we read yeah. it now with the temple, the temple, right? Yeah. As obedient children, and, and not work walking after the former lust, when we were ignorant. I'm not ignorant anymore. You see, I'm a child of God. I've been enlightened by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Right? Thank you, Lord. Yes. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be you holy. Verse 15 again. Notice that. If you call on the Father, say the Father. The Father. Oh, I missed verse 16. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Know what God said that. That's right. God said, Because I'm holy, you can be holy. You know why? Because he's in us. Mm -hmm. All right? And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judges according to every man's work, you mean God's going to judge us according to what we do yes. in life? Yes. If you read in, in Revelation, you'll say, You'll say, I see your works. I see your works. He's talking to the churches. I see your works. He says, you need to turn away from this and do what's right. You need to turn to me. You need to do what's right. We need to be ready when Jesus comes back. We need to walk in God's way. We need yes. to serve him with all yes. our hearts. Yes, yes. He may say, well, I love God. God knows I love him. You know how God knows if you love him? If you keep his commandments. That's how he knows. 
Jesus said, if you really love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's how God knows if you love. That's, That's what right. he said. That's what he said. Amen. And if you call on the Father who without respect of persons, say without respect of persons. Without respect of persons. In other words, God will treat everybody equal. Do you know the courts in our land? Do you know a lot of the courts are unjust? Did you know that? The courts in our land, they'll take one murderer and they'll give him 10 years in prison. And they'll take another murderer and they will, like, give him the electric chair. Do they still have the electric chair? Okay. So you got one one judge who gets, and the thing is, you can, it just depends on which judge you get. If you're lucky that day, you might get 10 years in prison. If you're unlucky, you may get the chair, depending on the judge you get. Right? Yeah. Listen, God's not an unrighteous judge. That's right. He's going to judge everybody the same. Yeah. I heard somebody say one time, they said, well, God's grace is so great that if you've ever, that if you have ever prayed the sinner's prayer, and then you went off back into sin, and you're right in the middle of fornication and adultery. Right in the act. And, he, and the trumpet sounds, and Jesus comes back, and you're right in the act. Then you'll still make the rapture. Listen, if you think God's going to take one adulterer and leave the other one, God has no respect for persons. God doesn't work on that. That is not a scriptural concept. No, it is not. The Bible says, no adulterer shall enter the kingdom of God. If you're practicing that kind of lifestyle, you are not ready. You know how to get ready? Repent, turn away from it, turn to God. Amen. He'll take all your sin and he'll wash it away. Yes. He'll cast in the depths of the sea, the Bible says. Yes. He'll cast, take it as far away from you as the east is from the west. It says he'll remember your sin no more. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness, praise you, Father. Praise and you'll be white as snow. That's how you repent. You turn away from those things. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see amazing grace. How sweet the sound that delivered a wretch like me. I've been delivered. Thank you, Lord. I used to be a wretch, but I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm made whole by the blood of Jesus Glory. Christ. Praise Hallelujah. God. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Are you getting anything out of this? Amen. Yeah. And if you call on the call, you see, because I don't get preached now. I get preached longer this morning. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Now, somebody told me this morning before service, I said, well, because you had a short night last night, that means you, you don't have to preach it long. No. I'm not going to let the devil steal anything from my and God's people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. In other words, we need to understand that there really is judgment. It's appointed once for the man to die, then the judgment. If you're in sin, get right with God. That's what Amen. That's right. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation or lifestyle, received by traditions of your fathers. It's not by traditions of men that we've been redeemed. It's not because you go and do some kind of ceremonial thing that's going to deliver you and set you free. It both did it by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's by his sacrifice of Calvary. Verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ yes. and of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's how we've been delivered. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you. All the traditions of men mean nothing. The only thing that matters is what Jesus did for you yes. and what Jesus did for me yes. at Calvary. Yes. And listen, folks, his sacrifice was not in vain. That's right. Jesus' sacrifice was not in vain. What he did was sufficient. God, one time God spoke to Paul and he said, Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. That's right. What he did is sufficient to meet all of our needs. Amen. What he did is sufficient to help us live a pure and holy life yes. in Christ Jesus. Praise you, Father. In 2 Peter chapter 1, it says, More grace can be multiplied unto us through the knowledge of Him. Because through His great and precious promises, we've been given everything we need for life and godliness. That we might become partakers of the divine nature of God, having escaped the corruption 
that's in the world through love. Glory to God. And so through 